This video is a simple guide to electric car terminology like kilowatt hours, kilowatts and regen, as well as the basics of charging. We'll assume you have a little basic knowledge of a petrol or diesel car and you want to know how an electric car compares. I'll refer to petrol or diesel cars as ICE cars and that stands for internal combustion engine which covers both petrol and diesel cars. Electric cars are EVs which stands for electric vehicles or BEV for battery electric vehicles. I'll use the Volkswagen ID3 as an example of a BEV simply because my wife drives one but this video applies to all electric cars. First a kilowatt hour. A kilowatt hour is a unit of electricity. It's an amount of electricity in the same way as a litre or a gallon is an amount of petrol or diesel. An ICE car fuel tank has a capacity of, for example, 50 litres of fuel. The battery in an ID3 can hold 45, 58 or 77 kilowatt hours of electricity depending on the model. It actually holds a little more but you can't use that little extra so we'll only consider usable capacity. In the same way that the range of an ICE car depends on the amount of fuel in a fuel tank, the range of an EV depends on the number of kilowatt hours in the battery. When the range is low you need to top up. The obvious advantage of an ICE car is the speed at which you can top it up. The actual range of any car depends on much more than this. Driving aggressively, braking late, driving at high speeds, driving in poor or cold weather, using heating and cooling all reduce the range of all cars. For example EVs use more electricity in cold weather but high altitude doesn't affect them whereas ICE cars may struggle at high altitude because the air is thinner and they need air to function. Manufacturers must use WLTP when quoting range and WLTP tends to be higher than a real world average. Take a look at the EV database for good estimates of real world range for different EVs. A kilowatt hour and a kilowatt are very different things. Some people refer to their battery capacity in kilowatts and that is simply wrong. I've heard motoring journalists refer to both kilowatts and kilowatts per hour as battery capacity and that's bunkum. Your EV battery holds an amount of kilowatt hours not kilowatts. You wouldn't ask a petrol head how many horsepower the fuel tank is so don't ask how many kilowatts a battery holds. It holds a number of kilowatt hours not kilowatts. Now what is a kilowatt? A kilowatt is a measure of power or how quickly work can be done. In the case of cars more power means faster acceleration. EVs don't have engines they have motors. The maximum power of an EV's motor is measured in kilowatts. Sometimes kilowatts are used to measure the power of internal combustion engines and that's fine and is directly comparable to EV motor power. More commonly internal combustion engines are measured in brake horsepower or sometimes PS which is metric horsepower. One kilowatt is just over 1.3 brake horsepower. Kilowatts, brake horsepower and PS are just different measures of power. If you had a battery with one kilowatt hour of electricity stored in it and you connected it to a one kilowatt motor and ran that motor at full power the battery would be empty or flat after one hour. The one kilowatt hour battery can provide one kilowatt for one hour or two kilowatts for half an hour and so on. So let's take the middle sized battery on the ID3 which holds 58 kilowatt hours and use it to run the higher power of the two available motors in the ID3 which is 150 kilowatts. Can you see that it could run the motor at full power for just over one third of an hour before the battery is flat? 58 kilowatt hours divided by 150 kilowatts is 0.37 hours or just over 23 minutes. In other words using 150 kilowatts for 23 minutes needs 58 kilowatt hours. Of course in the real world you only run the motor at full power for very brief periods of heavy acceleration so this time scale isn't what happens in reality. Sometimes the car can be moving and the motor can be idle or when braking or travelling downhill the motor can generate power and feed it back to the battery. So what is regen? Regen is short for regenerative braking. It's a way of recovering energy from momentum back into the battery. An ice car typically slows down using brake calipers to squeeze brake pads onto brake discs. The principle is similar to pedal cycle brakes. Slowing down a couple of tons of metal from 70 miles an hour to zero converts a large amount of kinetic energy or momentum which is a similar thing into a large amount of heat. 
An EV can use its mortar as a brick. It usually has normal brakes as well because the motor is usually connected to only two wheels and cannot generate enough braking force when the driver brakes heavily. When an EV is using regen, the motor generates electricity which can be fed back into the battery. No process is 100% efficient, so energy is lost, however regen can recover very useful amounts of electricity. Some EVs, or hybrids, will only regen when you lift your foot off the accelerator without pressing the brake. Pressing the brake activates traditional brakes and wastes energy as heat in the same way as an ice car would. Sometimes you can select how powerful you want the regen to be when you lift off. The ID3 is an example of an EV whereby the car will use regen instead of, or as well as, the traditional brakes, depending on the situation. If you brake gently, you'll use regen to slow the car down and traditional brakes are not needed. You can switch from drive to B mode and the ID3 will regen quite strongly when you lift off the accelerator, even without pressing the brake. Some EVs offer what's called one pedal driving, where strong regen brings the car to a complete halt without the driver touching the brake pedal. Just lift off the accelerator. So let's move on to charging. We measure the power of EV chargers in kilowatts. In round figures, a 3-pin plug at home can provide around 3 kilowatts. A dedicated EV charge box at home typically provides just over 7 kilowatts. The more powerful the charger, the faster you can top up the battery. The more powerful the motor, the quicker you can empty the battery. So motor power and charger power is all measured in kilowatts. You can plug your EV into different types of charge point. Different charging companies and pricing are outside the scope of this video. EVs have charge sockets and different manufacturers use different standards. Chadamo, Type 2 and CCS are the most common. The ID3 charges using Type 2 or CCS, but not Chadamo. Here are the plugs for Chadamo, Type 2 and CCS, sometimes called CCS Combo. Charging at home. First, the granny cable. So called either because it's very slow, sorry granny but I didn't invent the term, or because it's used for an emergency charge at granny's house. Sorry grandpa. The granny cable plugs into a standard 3 pin socket in the UK and the other end into the type 2 socket on the ID3. The house runs on AC or alternating current electricity and this is what the type 2 socket expects. The car converts the AC electricity into DC or direct current which is what the battery uses. Next a home wall box. These can be installed in your home as a dedicated power source for your car. They can be tethered, meaning they have their own cable, or untethered, where you use the cable that came with the car. Again, these plug into the Type 2 socket on the ID3, but they provide a higher power, over 7 kilowatts, and therefore charge the battery more quickly than the granny cable. Home wall boxes can be dumb or smart. Dumb wall boxes simply provide the power and the car accepts it either immediately, or at a time set using the car or the car's app. Smart wall boxes can have many features such as an app with timers, remote control and the ability to take power from solar panels only whilst they're providing it, bypassing the electricity grid altogether if that's what you want. Still in the early stages is the concept of vehicle to grid. The idea is to use the energy stored in the car to feed power into the grid via your wall box at peak times, then using the grid at off peak times to charge the car again. This could help to balance the electricity grid and provide income for the car's owner. At public locations you can find fast, rapid and ultra rapid charge points. When you're out and about you may wish to use a fast charger, for example while you're parked in a public or hotel car park or at a supermarket. Some are even free to use. There are many places where you can find chargers compatible with a Type 2 socket. These may provide 3, 7, 11, 22 and sometimes even 43 kilowatts. The maximum that the ID3 can take in the Type 2 socket is 11 kilowatts. You can use a more powerful charger, but you'll only charge at 11 kilowatts even on a 43 kilowatt charger. This type of charger is most useful when you're at a location you're visiting anyway, rather than just to charge your car. Now rapid and ultra rapid chargers. Rapid and ultra rapid chargers plug into the Type 2 and CCS sockets at the same time. As of 2021, there are well over 4,000 rapid charging devices in the UK. CCS chargers provide direct current or DC. This means that the car doesn't need to convert it from AC to DC and can charge the battery faster and without the conversion. 
the CCS socket on most ID3s can accept up to 100 kilowatts. Rapid chargers usually provide 50 kilowatts or higher, even up to 350 kilowatts. Again, you can use a charger that exceeds the power of the CCS socket on the car, but you'll charge at the power the car can accept. Rapid and ultra rapid chargers are most useful for long journeys, for example, to top up on the way to your destination. Note that car batteries can only accept full power charging if the battery is at the correct temperature and can only accept full power when at a relatively low state of charge or SOC. As the SOC increases, the maximum acceptable power decreases. You can find graphs online for most EVs. The car will set the power of the charger at the maximum it can accept and reduce the power as charge level increases. Because of this, you can't calculate charge time for rapid and ultra rapid chargers using some simple maths, but the car will usually give you an estimated end time whilst it charges. If you've reached 80% or so and there's someone queuing for the charger, you could consider saving their time and yours by continuing your journey and topping up a second time when your state of charge has reduced again. Tesla have an excellent network of chargers, but at present the rapid chargers offer use by Tesla vehicles only. Many Tesla cars can also use non-Tesla CCS chargers. If an ICE car parks in a bay reserved for EV charging, EV drivers say that the charger is iced. Whichever EV you drive or are thinking of driving, have a look at the rather excellent ZapMap app to find chargers across the country. The network is growing rapidly and you can see this by clicking on Stats on the ZapMap website. Many built-in sat-nav systems in EVs show charging locations and can plan routes with charging in mind. There are also phone apps which do the same, such as ABRP, a better route planner. Here's a graphic showing different charges and charge speeds using an ID3 58 kilowatt hour battery and four different chargers. You can see the typical charge speeds you can expect to get from 20 to 80 percent. Unless you're a high mileage driver and if you have off street parking or curbside charging facilities, almost all charging can be done at home. In months of ownership, our ID3 has only visited rapid chargers to try them out. We are low mileage drivers and we charge the car overnight when the charge speed isn't so important, using a cheap off-peak electricity tariff. Charging from around 30% to 80% is our usual plan, which we do every week or so, adding over 100 miles of range for £1.50. Occasional longer trips mean we charge more often. If we were driving more than 100 miles per day, we would charge every night. If you've never driven an electric vehicle, please try one. EVs have instant torque from zero miles per hour and even the less powerful ones take off impressively quickly. Be warned though, the EV driving experience is addictive. If you're interested in electric vehicles, sustainable energy and looking after the environment, take a look at the excellent fully charged YouTube channel established in 2010 by Robert Llewellyn of Red Dwarf and Scrap Heat Challenge fame. Thanks for watching and I hope you've found this video useful. Please subscribe to the channel for more driving videos, press the bell icon to be notified of new videos and if you like this video, please press the like button.